Um, so before starting, um, I would like to uh, to say that uh, in a couple of slides, uh, I'm going to use menti.com uh, so that we can have a little bit of interaction. And uh, I will also have the chance to get some feedback from you and not only uh, share uh, the information from uh, for uh, Deep Scholar. Uh, so just uh, uh, take this into consideration and uh, maybe have a menti.com uh, tab open in your browser. Uh, so um, as, as you can um, uh, see in the title of the presentation, uh, the service that I'm going to discuss uh, is related uh, to academic profiles. Uh, so why do the, we need them uh, uh, at the first place? Uh, so in general, uh, we know that uh, researchers, um, while they are working, they are producing a lot of outputs, for example, uh, research papers, uh, data sets, uh, software, and um, it is uh, very common uh, that uh, they need to be evaluated uh, based on this output uh, for various reasons. For example, uh, for career advancements, when uh, they, they are candidates for a particular uh, for example, for a particular open position in a research organization, uh, when uh, someone uh, is going to evaluate them uh, for uh, some professional achievements, uh, for example, to give them a prize or something like this, an award. Uh, so it is uh, a very common um, activity, a very common task uh, for someone to go through uh, the various items of uh, um, uh, that that uh, belong to to the output that the researcher is producing, and then uh, try to uh, evaluate uh, their productivity, uh, the impact of their work, or uh, very similar uh, aspects of their uh, career. And of course, an academic profile uh, is um, something like a summary. Uh, that tries to, to provide um, an easy way uh, for evaluators to um, uh, go through uh, the various items uh, of um, a researchers, uh, the, the various activities that the researcher uh, had uh, participated. Uh, but even if uh, we have these academic profiles, uh, the work is not that easy. And uh, a very important problem um, is that uh, the scientific output uh, is uh, being um, uh, produced in an exponential uh, with an exponential growth. Uh, so we have uh, more researchers than ever uh, in the history of uh, humanity. Uh, we have also this uh, culture. Uh, around uh, the notorious publish of or, or Paris trend. Uh, so a lot of uh, researchers uh, um, have the pressure uh, to publish more. Uh, and also we have other actors uh, in this uh, uh, landscape that are taking, uh, um, th that are um, trying to uh, grab the opportunity, let's say, uh, like the predatory publishers that are offering uh, quick and easy ways for everyone to publish, even if uh, sometimes uh, the uh, publications that uh, are produced uh, in, in the are published in their journals uh, are of uh, questionable quality. Uh, but in any case, all these are just factors, just some of the factors that contribute. Uh, to this uh, uh, increase uh, in the uh, rate uh, with which uh, the scientific output, output is growing. And uh, of course, this exponential growth uh, is related to many uh, problems. For example, uh, it is uh, hindering 
very uh, useful tasks, uh, which are related uh, to both research assessment, which is uh, the subject that uh, I will uh, discuss today, but also other uh, tasks like uh, those related to scientific knowledge discovery. And uh, one of the ways that uh, uh, some um, uh, developers uh, tried to, uh, and, and researchers tried to uh, alleviate uh, problems like this uh, was to uh, try to use, to exploit uh, impact uh, indicators uh, for the research work. So the main idea is that uh, in theory, it is possible to estimate to some extent uh, the scientific impact of an article uh, if you analyze uh, how many other articles are talking about this article. And of course, the more, the more articles that are talking about this, uh, the most uh, the expected impact uh, would be. And uh, based on that um, idea, uh, various indicators have been proposed and have been used uh, by relevant platforms. We all know, uh, for example, citation count, uh, which is a simple and popular uh, indicator of scientific impact based on uh, citations. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, it's being used uh, for from many academic search engines like Google Scholar, for example, uh, to help uh, researchers uh, prioritize uh, their reading. Uh, but also uh, going to the researcher level, uh, there are some uh, indicators, some researcher level indicators uh, that are based on citation count, like uh, uh, the a notorious uh, H index or the item index that are provided again by Google Scholar. And uh, these indicators uh, in many times are used uh, both from the researchers themselves to self-monitor uh, their performance, but also uh, from people that uh, are using this uh, to facilitate uh, the uh, process of uh, uh, researcher assessment, uh, not always uh, in, in a good way because sometimes they are using them as a shortcut for the evaluation and they over rely on them. Uh, so based on this uh, approach, uh, a common structure for uh, academic profiles that you can find in different uh, platforms would be something like this. Uh, you have uh, sometimes the a photo of the researcher, uh, the name, uh, some contact details and details about the affiliations, uh, a list of publications. Uh, sorry, I'm getting some noise. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, a list of uh, citation count based uh, indicators usually uh, on the profile page. So this is more or less the concept that you can see uh, if you search around uh, for platforms that support this kind of uh, uh, concept. Uh, so before going uh, why this is not uh, good enough and uh, some problems that uh, could someone think uh, with this approach, I would like uh, for uh, all of you to go to mentor.com and use the code that you can see on the screen, 2415-5190, so that uh, we can have um, a first uh, quiz. Uh, let me start. Uh, so first of all, I would like to see uh, which are the platforms that we know that uh, can that uh, they offer a researcher profile. Maybe some platforms that uh, uh, you already use, for example, or you have heard about them. Um, not only open ones, but as you know. Some of you already provided some proprietary. I will give you some time. I know we are a lot of people, so I will wait. Okay, it seems that uh, we have uh, uh, values that uh, you already know. Of course, a lot of you uh, mentioned the Google Scholar, uh, ResearchGate, uh, Web of Science, uh, ORCID, a uh, very important one, uh, but also uh, KUDOS uh, that is focusing on uh, contributions. Uh, 
So yeah, okay. Um, there is, uh, I mean, uh, here the heterogeneity in the responses also is an indication that uh, this particular um, field uh, has a lot of uh, options already and uh, oh. is being developed uh, heavily. Uh, so uh, then I have some questions. So we mentioned that uh, one very common uh, content of these profiles is uh, a series of uh, a group of citation count based indicators. Uh, so I have a couple of questions that uh, I would like to see. Uh, how much do you agree uh, with these statements and uh, uh, how much uh, you disagree? So. Um, the first uh, question is, uh, so is there any problem that uh, I don't see anyone? Ah, so yeah, I can see now the first responses. So the first uh, statement is, uh, if the citation count based indicators are a convenient way uh, to get uh, some insights about the impact of a researcher's work. Uh, let's see how this goes. The second one is about, uh, if uh, you think that uh, they leave important aspects of a researcher's work uh, uncovered, um, then if these indicators come always with clear semantics, and uh, finally, uh, if you think that uh, these indicators are uh, often, often, not often, uh, often misused uh, during research assessment, uh, for example, when evaluators uh, over rely on them. Okay, I think that we have already collected a lot of uh, responses, about uh, 30 responses, and it seems like uh, a lot of people, uh, maybe uh, almost most of the people believe that uh, uh, indicators uh, for impact that are based on citation count uh, provide some useful insights. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it is also evident uh, that uh, they cannot cover uh, the full spectrum of uh, researchers' activities. Uh, and uh, also most uh, people agree um, that the semantics of these indicators are not always clear. For example, what does it mean for me to have an age index about 15? Uh, is it something related to my productivity, to, to the impact of my work, work, both of them? How is this different from the I-10? Are they capturing the same thing or maybe something slightly different? All these are not always evident uh, based on your answers. And uh, until now, I agree with everything. Uh, and of course, uh, it is uh, more or less uh, agreed from uh, by, by anyone uh, here. Uh, that uh, these uh, indicators are often uh, misused uh, during uh, research assessment uh, uh, tasks, activities. Okay, so uh, it seems that uh, currently uh, there are some problems uh, with these academic profiles. And of course, if we would like to focus on uh, the problems, uh, we will soon realize uh, that uh, these problems are uh, either related to these indicators that uh, the profiles are including, uh, either uh, on the fact that uh, most of these profiles uh, focus a lot uh, on publications and not other uh, activities that are related uh, to, to the work of researchers. Uh, so uh, I will try to analyze uh, in more detail some known problems related to, to these uh, aspects. Then I will try to uh, describe how some of the functionalities that we are building uh, for Big Scholar uh, are trying to alleviate uh, this type of uh, issues. And finally, uh, I will give you also a quick demo and uh, explain how uh, we are extending this platform uh, and improving the, it significantly uh, in the context of the CRASPOS uh, project. So first of all, uh, when we are using citation count based indicators, uh, we should always keep in mind that uh, citation count is an indicator that has a lot of known issues. Uh, and these issues can affect uh, the ability of uh, people that are using it uh, to discover valuable research. Uh, one such problem, there are also others that I will not uh, mention, but one such problem is that 
uh, it is possible for a work uh, to have a lot of merit, uh, but um, and also a lot of impact. Uh, but uh, uh, this work uh, that has a lot of impact uh, could have an indirect impact to the, to the community. So um, it uh, may not be highly cited uh, from uh, the articles of a particular domain, but because uh, it is cited from a couple of important articles in that domain that, uh, that those are well cited, uh, you cannot understand if you just uh, count citations that this is an important work that has uh, been uh, that, that has influenced a lot uh, the respective domain. Uh, for example, here we have uh, this hidden gem. Uh, it has only one citation, but uh, you can see from uh, the paper that uh, um, is citing this uh, publication uh, that is an important paper. So since it has influenced this important paper, uh, someone should be able to also acknowledge the fact that uh, this work uh, has contributed to the field, something that is not uh, easy and is not captured by citation count based indicators. Then another pitfall is that uh, um, often uh, people uh, forget that uh, the even scientific impact has uh, multiple aspects. So uh, scientific impact uh, is not something that you can easily capture using one indicator like citation count. And uh, also um, you, you may capture one particular aspect uh, of scientific impact with that indicator. Uh, there are also other aspects that are not captured. And um, based on the uh, application based on the use case, uh, it may be important. Uh, th th this uh, additional aspects may be uh, of particular importance. Here, for example, I have a very indicative example uh, for people that are searching for important publications in a particular field, for example, in machine learning. And uh, we have two cases. We have an experienced researcher that uh, is revisiting the field. Uh, so this researcher is interested uh, for uh, recent papers, for research advanti uh, advances, I mean works that are currently popular in the domain. Uh, while we have a second uh, researcher, maybe a student, uh, that is trying to uh, draft uh, a survey of the same field. Uh, for this particular use case, it is uh, of uh, uh, special importance uh, to find uh, foundational articles, those that has been uh, well established uh, in the domain. And of course, although uh, some articles may be also popular and uh, foundational, it is not always uh, the case. And uh, these two uh, properties are not always correlated, 100% correlated. Uh, of course, another thing that uh, we should consider is that uh, when someone is using indicators, for example, for a profile, uh, and these indicators are used uh, in practice uh, to make decisions, for example, to, uh, to hire people uh, or to give awards, uh, then uh, very quickly uh, this indicator uh, will start to uh, get a lot of uh, um, attacks. Uh, so people uh, will try to game the indicator uh, so that their own work, their own profiles uh, appear to be uh, more important than they are. And um, this phenomenon is well known. Um, it has uh, multiple names. Uh, one name is the Goodhart's law. Another one is Campbell's law. But also there is this uh, Cobra effect term, term uh, that describes the same uh, phenomenon. Uh, so in general, we should always keep uh, in mind that uh, uh, when you have only one indicator or a couple of indicators that are capturing the same thing, uh, these uh, indicators can be gained very easily. Uh, and this, of course, will affect uh, the decisions that you make uh, based on them if you don't also consider additional uh, context and uh, uh, additional properties of the work uh, of the people that you are assessing. Uh, then, um, okay, the, the previous uh, point uh, somehow uh, argues that uh, you need more indicators because you capture uh, more aspects of uh, research impact and also 
uh, it is uh, more difficult for people to attack uh, a, a set of indicators than one particular indicator. But on the other hand, uh, you have also the opposite problem. If you are including in a profile a lot of different indicators and the semantics are not always very clear, uh, and also you don't uh, provide a lot of provenance about how you are calculating these uh, indicators, on which data, which are the common uh, pitfalls, the limitations that you know about them, uh, on which data uh, you have calculated uh, it, what is the coverage, things like that. Uh, then it is possible that you create more confusion and um, than the good that you bring. And also um, you cannot um, help people avoid uh, improper uh, uses and uh, getting misconceptions about uh, the researchers and uh, the respective research work. Uh, another thing is that uh, impact is not everything. Uh, a lot of people sometimes uh, confuse impact uh, with scientific merit, but as we said, for example, with uh, uh, this uh, uh, example about um, the hidden gems, uh, it's not always uh, that uh, the impact is correlated, uh, highly correlated with scientific merit. Uh, so uh, there are uh, aspects of academic performance uh, that may be difficult to quantify, but um, these uh, aspects may be also important. And of course, publications is not everything. Uh, as we said, most of these profiles uh, are focusing on uh, a list of publications, but uh, we all know that uh, uh, there are a lot of important research activities uh, like software development, dataset production, peer review, teaching that are not related uh, to the scientific articles uh, someone is writing uh, are very important, are vital for research uh, itself and for science, uh, but uh, they are not uh, always properly acknowledged. And finally, um, you should always keep in mind that you should not over rely on uh, indicators uh, because uh, when people are doing this, uh, we know that uh, a lot of problems uh, can occur. And if you are interested to learn more about uh, this, the types of problems, not only in academia, uh, but also in other domains, I strongly suggest uh, for you to uh, read this book, The Tyranny of Metrics. It has a lot of examples. Uh, it includes a lot of examples uh, where, uh, when uh, the use of indicators for assessment uh, created problems. Uh, a final point that I would like to, to make uh, is that uh, uh, when we are, uh, even if we don't have all these problems, uh, when uh, a platform is providing a generic profile that uh, tries to summarize the whole uh, scientific track, the whole work or uh, the whole career of a researcher, uh, this profile uh, will not be always easy. Um, to scrutinize and to get insights and uh, um, uh, about uh, the performance, the impact, and all these uh, that are related to a particular research. Uh, so, speaking of all these uh, problems, let me describe uh, how uh, we we are working uh, towards alleviating some of these issues, because of course uh, we have started focusing on some of them and not all all of them. Uh, so uh, let me first discuss our approach about indicators, about impact indicators in particular. Um, uh, this started as uh, a research uh, interest for us, uh, so based uh, on a work that uh, we have done uh, together with uh, some uh, PhD students uh, that I had uh, uh, co-supervised, uh, we made this um, a large survey and uh, uh, experimental study on different uh, uh, indicators uh, for uh, uh, scientific impact based on citations. And uh, we tried to see uh, if we could uh, find that uh, all these are measuring the same thing or something slightly different. It, and it happened that uh, not all of them were focusing on the same uh, aspect of impact, 
and not all of them were good in identifying different aspects different aspects of impact so based on this work and some others that uh, we have published uh, after that uh, we had identified a couple of uh, interesting aspects of, of scientific impact and um, this uh, we have given them uh, some names. The first one is the traditional impact. Um, that is the uh, well-known, uh, the well-known citation count is capturing this particular, uh, the impact from this particular perspective. Uh, then we have something else that we call it uh, influence. And it is very related and uh, sometimes very correlated to the traditional impact. Uh, but uh, it alleviates some problems that the citation count has. Uh, for example, it considers also indirect influence and not only uh, the direct one, uh, bringing, uh, uh, gi giving good, uh, uh, good uh, scores uh, for publications that uh, uh, are hidden gems. And uh, the algorithm that we are, that we are using uh, to calculate the score for that uh, is PageRank is the same algorithm that Google is uh, using for uh, web pages to rank web pages and uh, bring uh, to the top those that are uh, more important. Then we have another aspect that is uh, popularity. Uh, this is trying to alleviate the problem that uh, when you're trying to measure something like a centrality measure on top of cit a citation network, uh, then uh, you are getting a lot of bias against those uh, publications that are recently published uh, because uh, these publications do not have enough time uh, to accumulate a lot of uh, uh, citations. Uh, they may have already attracted a lot of interest, but because people uh, need a lot of time to write uh, some papers and then for the papers to, be pu to get published after peer review and all this, uh, most of the publications uh, need at least uh, a couple of months or in some domains even a couple of years to start getting an adequate number of uh, citations. So uh, if you are uh, trying to calculate citation-based me measures, uh, then you are getting a lot of uh, bias against recently published uh, papers. And the previous um, indicators that I mentioned are biased against the recent publications. So we uh, felt that we should introduce another uh, indicator. We called it popularity, and we have an algorithm that, uh, uh, based on the experiments, uh, uh, is the best one to uh, identify this uh, particular uh, aspect of impact. And we have also another one, the impulse, that is just uh, trying to identify how quickly, how fast a publication uh, started attracting attracting the, the interest uh, after its uh, publication. And based on the results of all these studies, uh, we created a workflow uh, that uh, gets data from the opener graph, creates a large citation network that contains more than 150 million uh, works, publications, data sets, and other research products, uh, together with billions of citations uh, that exist uh, between them, uh, that we get uh, from the graph again, these uh, citations, and the graph gets them uh, from Crossref, from open citations, from a lot of different sources. And then on this citation network, we have some uh, distributed codes uh, written in Apache Spark uh, that uh, are calculating uh, these uh, four indicators that I mentioned, and uh, we are uh, then publishing them uh, on Zenodo as an open data set. It is called BibDB. Uh, we are also using them to create some uh, added value services to provide to our users. Uh, one of them is the Bib Scholar that I'm going to mention today. And of course, we're giving back the data uh, to the opener graph. We include them so everyone that uh, wants to use the opener graph data uh, also has access uh, to these indicators. Uh, a couple of things that are worth mentioning uh, is that uh, we don't only provide the scores, and because sometimes the scores are not very easy to understand, uh, we also provide classes for each of the research products. Uh, for example, uh, something like if uh, this article is in the top uh, 1% or 0.01% of a particular domain or of the whole data set that we have. 
Uh, also, we make sure that we do not double count citations that are made from the same article, uh, but from different versions. For example, if we have the preprint or multiple versions of a preprint of an article, we only count once uh, the citations. Uh, we take uh, the advantage of uh, the open air um, the duplication algorithm to achieve this, and this is very important. And uh, finally, uh, for all the indicators that we are calculating, uh, we offer detailed explanations. We have a particular section in our website that tries to explain not only uh, the semantics of these indicators, uh, but their proper uses, their known misuses, and uh, documentation about uh, how uh, they have been produced and on which data. So uh, more or less, uh, this is how we are trying to alleviate problems with indicators. Uh, regarding uh, the different types of contributions, uh, as uh, I uh, implied, uh, we are currently uh, collecting uh, the publications and the data sets of the researchers. We get them from their ORCID profiles. So anyone that has an up-to-date ORCID profile and has all these items uh, publicly available uh, can uh, create an account uh, in our platform, synchronize uh, their account with ORCID and get everything uh, in their own profiles in our system. And uh, as you know, okay, publications and data sets uh, are not enough. Uh, we acknowledge that and uh, we plan to extend uh, to cover more uh, types of um, uh, contributions of researchers. Uh, we plan to, to add entries uh, from uh, for research software, peer reviews that they can also come uh, from the ORCID profiles, uh, the involvement uh, in projects, uh, and also uh, we are trying to identify uh, teaching activities. Uh, so we are not uh, at a very uh, good shape right now regarding this, we, but we are trying uh, to add additional um, activities uh, to be acknowledged inside the profiles that we are building. Uh, then um, our system also identifies the topics uh, of the works uh, and uh, these topics appear uh, in each entry of uh, the uh, uh, that represents a work and uh, also supports um, and more importantly uh, also supports the declaration of contribution roles so the researcher can provide uh, the credit uh, classes uh, that uh, describe better uh, the contribution that they have in a particular uh, work uh, so it is possible to give more um, con context about uh, what they did uh, for this particular work. And uh, also the system uh, supports uh, views of the profile that focus on particular aspects that can uh, show uh, the profile from different perspectives, for example, according to particular topics or according, according to particular roles. But I will show you more about this uh, in a quick demo in a couple of seconds. But before that, uh, let's go to Menti again. Uh, there is another code, 25001507. So if you go there, I have a second uh, quiz for you, uh, which is about um, the next thing that I would like to mention. Uh, so let me see. Here you are. Uh, so the question is, if you have uh, heard of uh, the term narrative CVs, uh, so if you know what it is, uh, if it is the first time that you hear about that, uh, because this is something that I'm uh, going to, to mention uh, in the next slide. So we already have a lot of responses, about 20. It seems like like uh, most of you have already heard about narrative CVs, this is very good uh, because uh, it seems that uh, narrative CVs uh, can uh, fix some problems that I mentioned. Uh, there are some of you that have not heard about them, uh, but also some of you that may be experts because they have used them. Uh, so going back to my presentation, 
Uh, so what we are trying to also support uh, in the BIP Scholar profiles uh, is to offer a researcher uh, the chance uh, to put uh, uh, more context uh, on uh, the research work that they are doing. So we plan um, to support uh, narratives. Uh, it is already possible for a researcher that creates a profile uh, to write a narrative describing, for example, a, a line of work that they have uh, created and uh, connect this narrative to, part to a particular set of uh, publications uh, so that they can later share it uh, with someone uh, if uh, they are interested uh, to know more about this particular line of work. And uh, this is also a work in progress in the context of, uh, Graspos, uh, of the GRASPOS project. Uh, we are trying to extend these functionalities in a way that uh, we support uh, some well-known uh, templates for narrative CVs, and it, uh, we can facilitate the creation of uh, narratives based on these uh, templates in our platform directly. Uh, so uh, just to summarize, uh, the Big Scholar Profiles uh, is a, a platform, a service that uh, is trying to help researchers emphasize what matters in their research work and to uh, put it into context. Uh, in, in general, what uh, it is provided, uh, it is um, an ORCID-based profile for each researcher that is willing to create one. Uh, you can connect your own uh, ORCID profile, get everything inside the B profile, and then you can have uh, an enrichment of uh, this profile with additional information like credit roles that you provide, like the indicators that I mentioned, uh, like narratives that you can provide. Uh, of course, we, uh, we focus a lot and we are going to extend the functionalities around narratives. Uh, because uh, we believe that it is uh, a nice way for uh, describing uh, lines of work and uh, providing valuable uh, information about these works, about the impact that they have, about the uh, related activities and the skills of the researcher that uh, were needed for that. And finally, an important aspect of these profiles uh, is that uh, you can uh, explore uh, its profile in a more uh, interactive way than uh, the most pro the most uh, platforms are providing uh, because you can have uh, let's say tailored views uh, based on your uh, interests and just to give you a quick demo uh, you can see here my own profile um, i have uh, uh, included uh, a lot of works uh, in my orchid profile and then these works uh, come uh, here in the BIP uh, Scholar profile. And uh, as you can see, you can, you can find the list of works on the top. Uh, you can uh, uh, sort them based on different uh, um, For example, publication here, which is the default or uh, based on a particular uh, indicator. And then uh, you get a summary of all the topics uh, that these works have. Uh, here on the top, uh, you get also a summary of the different roles uh, that the researcher had uh, in these works, if this, uh, um, these roles uh, have been provided by the researcher. So, for example, here I have provided that to this paper, I have contributed in the conceptualization, uh, investigation, methodology, but also in writing. And of course, I can add any of the terms from the credit terminology that I had it is well adopted in, by various publishers and has been an ISO uh, standard uh, recently. Um, and here you can see some uh, values for, for different in indicators that we are grouping them together based on their uh, purpose, uh, the aspect that they are trying to capture. Uh, you can see these scores based on the whole profile that I have, but if you are interested to see how I am doing in a particular domain, for example, in data science, you can use these uh, topics here as fa facets, and then you get only those publications that are related to that topic. And if you are uh, especially interested to see only those works that uh, in, in which I have uh, contributed to writing the original draft, you can also do this in a particular domain and with a particular role how I am doing. Uh, 
Uh, so this is something that you cannot find in other platforms. You can see, you can find tailored views of a researcher profiles, uh, or you can see for your own profile for self monitoring purposes, uh, the same thing. You can investigate uh, which are, for example, the strong uh, um, skills uh, of yours. Um, so every cal every indicator is uh, calculated on the fly based on the list of works that uh, the filters uh, keep uh, in the list of works. And of course, you can then clear the filters and see again uh, the whole picture. And going to the narratives, uh, here I have created one public narrative uh, that describes a particular line of work. You can see the indicators based on this particular narrative, based on the works that contribute to this particular narrative. I have created a narrative that describes how all these are related. And of course, uh, I'm trying to also discuss about uh, my motivation, uh, the impact that this works had, works had, and things like that. And everything that you can see here uh, can be public or private. So we don't uh, want to stress researchers to publish this type of profiles, uh, interactive profiles. Uh, currently, we provide uh, two options uh, for them to make them public, as it is mine, uh, or to make them private. And you can use the, the, the same functionalities just for, for self-monitoring purposes. And going back, uh, the important next steps, uh, the work that we are doing uh, in the context of Graspos, but also other uh, projects. Um, we are trying to improve uh, in, in impact indicators for data sets, for research data, uh, because currently uh, we only consider the direct citations that the data sets are getting uh, from um, publications. We also collect, uh, we consider on collecting usage data from usage counts, for example, a, a platform that OpenAir is providing uh, to give uh, insights about how many downloads, how many views the data sets are collecting. Uh, but also uh, we plan to uh, consider uh, indirect uh, mentions or indirect uh, uh, acknowledgement of the use of a data set. For example, in many cases, a data set is introduced in the publication and in that cases in some domains they prefer to cite the paper and not the data set so we try to consider this type of uh, acknowledgement then uh, we uh, are going to very soon support um, the creation of these views that I show you, the CV views, let's say, uh, based on particular assessment protocols that are uh, that has been created in the context of a particular framework. For example, Graspos is building one such framework, the OSA framework, and uh, we will try to uh, translate uh, the guidelines of the framework and its contents uh, into um, ways to represent the data that we collect in a a way that is compliant to to the suggestion, the, the recommendations of uh, the framework for particular uses, because every use is different. It is different, for example, if you want to uh, quantify uh, the compliance to open science practices, or if you want to quantify uh, productivity or something else. Uh, so uh, according to the use case, uh, each framework is possible to provide different uh, protocols. Uh, we plan to find uh, practical ways uh, to translate these uh, protocols into um, ways to represent uh, these profiles, uh, standard ways to represent these profiles. Uh, we also are trying to add functionalities that will facilitate the creation and analysis of uh, narrative CVs. As I said, uh, we are going to very soon support uh, widely known templates that have been created for narrative CVs. Uh, these uh, provide uh, some structure to the narratives, and this will help both people to better write these uh, narratives. Uh, they will understand what to provide there, and also for assessors to, um, to for evaluators to understand um, how is the narrative uh, structured and find the information that they need more easily. And finally, uh, we are going to support multiple ways to download and share the profile views. Uh, so it will be possible, for example, to download them locally and maybe share them if you wish. 
And uh, before closing and going to the question section, I would like to ask you if you found this interesting to go and create your own profile. You can use the QR code that I have in this slide. Uh, this will redirect you to the URL of uh, Bib Scholar. Uh, you can create, you can register there. You can create a, a user. We have more than 500 users already uh, in the system, and then uh, you can uh, synchronize your ORCID profiles, and um, uh, you can even keep it uh, private uh, when you create this uh, profile uh, or make it public. It does not matter. But if you want to play with that, you can keep it uh, private and. Uh, you can give us a uh, useful feedback. So that was from my side. Thank you all for the interest. Uh, I, I would like to hear from you uh, the questions that you may have. And in general, apart from the discussion that we're going to have right now, you can also find me via email or uh, via my social media. Uh, we can uh, also discuss there offline. And thank you, thank you again for the interest. Thank you, Thanasi. Thank you for delivering a truly informative and insightful presentation. Now I'd like to invite um, our audience to participate in the discussion. So if you have any question, please feel free to raise your hand or submit it to the chat. Thank you. Okay, so if there are any questions already in the chat, just let me know yes, because I cannot see the chat. Yes, we have a question about the topics, links to publication and, uh, and other results. I would like to know if they are manually added or machine generated. Uh, yes, uh, this is a good question. Uh, currently, they are uh, automatically generated uh, and um, we get them uh, from the relevant uh, wiki data classes. Uh, that has been uh, um, added uh, to the publications from Open Alex. Uh, so um, currently we get them from Open Alex, but uh, very soon uh, in the next period we also consider to include uh, topics based on different um, uh, for, for different. Um, uh, taxonomies uh, for fields. Uh, for example, we know that there is an active work in open air and the open air graph uh, to provide for the majority of the uh, works that they cover uh, the fields of science. And uh, we will try to also support this. And to be honest, because we already uh, get everything from the open air uh, graph, uh, we will uh, seriously consider to only use this uh, because it was it, then, then our workflow will be uh, more sustainable and easy to uh, uh, to extend and uh, maintain. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions? I will give some more time. Time, yes. Um, in terms of uh, managing less account, it is going to be possible to sign in with uh, Org ID. Yes, uh, that's also a good point. Uh, currently, uh, we haven't done, uh, we haven't worked uh, towards this direction, uh, but I agree that would be helpful. Uh, at least uh, we tried to avoid uh, uh, creating uh, overhead. Uh, for data entry uh, for researchers. Uh, so we selected to get everything for, from ORCID profiles uh, just uh, um, to help people in having only one place to provide this information. Uh, also, uh, while uh, when we started to collect in credit uh, roles, um, we started uh, getting them locally. Uh, so the credit roles, uh, we keep them inside our own database. Uh, but uh, since it is possible to push uh, this role back to ORCID, uh, we plan to, to build this extension and uh, 
uh, every time that the researcher is adding uh, some uh, contribution roles in their own publications, it will be possible to push these changes back to their ORCID profiles. And also, if there are already uh, determined uh, ORCID roles, because sometimes, for example, this can uh, come from publishers, uh, this will be automatically loaded to the profile, something that is not happening right now. Uh, I mean, right now the credit role should be provided by the researcher inside our platform, but we plan to change that. But I agree, uh, although we try to minimize uh, the overhead for researchers, uh, this would be an extra step and uh, we will consider to do this uh, in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, any other questions that you may have? No. Okay. So that's so that's, we have a little bit. Um, oh. I I, th I think there is another question. In yes, the yes. 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 Um, to measure the success of the new metric, do you have some test samples? I mean, with a generic age index method. These researchers cannot get the credits. They, I don't see all the questions, sorry about that. But with the new metric, this is not the case. Do you have this kind of the of test samples? Uh, so let, let me see if I, I uh, totally understand the question. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, we are not... Uh, First of all, H index has been uh, connected to various problems that uh, uh, we all know, uh, and I mentioned earlier. And um, uh, it was for us uh, the, the, the decision why we have included it, for example, it was because it is widely used. Uh, so we would like to keep it so that it is possible for someone to see uh, that whatever we are calculating is uh, very close to what other platforms uh, is calculating. So uh, they can uh, see, for example, the coverage that we have. It is very close to other platforms and the H index that we are calculating because, of course, we are uh, using the open air graph data, which are excellent in coverage, uh, are very close to that. Uh, so. Uh, we don't believe that uh, the H index uh, should be used by its own. Uh, we are providing some additional indicators that are researcher level, and we think that this bring different aspects that are not covered uh, from the H index. Uh, about them, uh, if we have tested uh, if they work, uh, if if they make sense or something like this, uh, all these indicators are based on some article level uh, versions of these indicators that we have uh, tested uh, very thorough, thoroughly in the uh, in the past. And uh, we have confirmed, for example, that uh, whatever we are calculating for popularity um, has good results uh, in capturing the popular popularity of a particular uh, article. We have some ground truths that we have used, uh, which are based on the idea that uh, you can uh, understand uh, the current impact, impact of a publication if you wait for a couple of years and then you measure again uh, the citations. In any case, I will not go into very a lot of technical details, but the idea is that uh, regarding the article level indicators, we have uh, done a lot of tests. Regarding the uh, researcher level, uh, we take from granted that they capture the respective aspect of impact based on the tests that we have done for the article level indicators, and then we summarize them uh, for the article level. Also, uh, um, despite which is the current set that we support for the researcher level indicators, we have just selected uh, those that uh, we thought would be useful and we had included them in the profiles. But what we are doing is not a work in, in a vacuum. Uh, we are trying to follow uh, the latest developments uh, in the field of research assessment. And if a very important indicator uh, has been proposed, we will try to include it. Uh, and also, if a particular indicator is uh, very problematic, is found to be very pro problematic, we are going to highlight and emphasize uh, in our um, interface uh, that fact. 
And finally, uh, it's not everything, as I said, around indicators. Uh, we don't consider this as the most important uh, contributions that we have. Um, we provide indicators as a way to supplement uh, the processes for research assessment. So someone can use them in a way to help them uh, get the first glimpse and then uh, they should uh, focus on the other more uh, quantitative uh, sorry, uh, qualitative aspects that we provide, like which are the contribution roles of the researchers in particular works, which are the narratives, try to understand uh, the line of work that is related to the particular narratives. Um, and uh, this is the way that we plan to, to, to use the, uh, the platform. And again, everything, as I said, we're going to follow the outputs uh, and the last developments of the uh, research assessment community. We are not the experts in that. We are building the services and we are following their activities um, in, in uh, try, trying to, to build something uh, as useful as possible. Uh, and don't forget that even all these aspects that we mentioned, when they become established, a lot of uh, problems will be identified, a lot, a lot of uh, biases will be introduced, a lot of attacks will happen. For example, even for narratives, we already know of some problems. We know, for example, that based on the uh, characteristics of a particular researcher, they may, they may exaggerate or not in their narratives, and this will create a different impression uh, based on uh, how much someone is exaggerating on uh, advertising their work. Uh, so it's not that all these concepts by their own are uh, bulletproof, nothing is bulletproof. We are going to provide, uh, to give more ways for people to uh, have a chance to uh, create profiles that better emphasize hidden contributions that they have and putting the correct context. And uh, of course, this is a continuous work and uh, we will stop, uh, we will not stop uh, and say that, okay, now uh, this is uh, uh, ready. This is something that we should continuously uh, improve. Uh, another question, I, I uh, have the chance to also answer this. Yes, yes, of, yes, yes, of course. Uh, about BIP uh, that is connected to open air. Uh, it is expected to European Commission will adopt the meeting time. Uh, yes, uh, okay, so keep in mind that uh, this tool, yes, of course, since it is uh, using uh, open air as its main source, uh, every data inside the open air graph uh, can be um, uh, visualized and um, uh, summarized here, analyzed here in this platform. But um, this is not the only researcher level monitor that we are planning to, to build in the Graspos project. I know that uh, open air also plans uh, to have a similar platform, taking some uh, key ideas from uh, BIP Scholar, but also uh, from other uh, uh, recommendations that are around. Uh, they are trying to create something similar. Uh, so in general, either this platform or the open air one, uh, yes, they can be used uh, from uh, the AC uh, for various purposes. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, 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 you guys, uh, something last, you can just consider the Bib Scholar as the most ex more experimental platform regarding all okay. this. So, okay. uh, and then uh, the open air uh, services always are uh, mature and uh, production ready. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other question? You can raise also your hand. Okay, thank you all for participating in this session and uh, especially Thanasis for your, um, for your valuable contribution in this session. Thank you all for participating. Uh, thank you for the invitation and for the interest. Thank you. Bye-bye.